So let's just trace through the execution of this program um, back here to make sure you understand exactly what's going on. After we allocated and initialized our fraction, we called the set numerator method and passed it to value 1. Now let's go back to the code for set numerator. The value 1 that gets passed to this method gets stored inside this local variable called n here and then the method gets executed. Inside the method we take that value of n which is 1 and we stash it away inside our fractions numerator instance variable. Then we do the same thing with the set, de set denominator method. We pass it here the value 3. The value 3 gets stored inside this local variable d. d gets stored in st inside the instance variable denominator and that's how we set the instance variables for our fraction object my fraction. We then use call the print method. The print method gets executed here which simply takes the value of our two instance variables numerator and denominator and passes them along to nslog to be displayed. And that's our first um, first example showing how to actually write your own class, how to allocate your own instance, how to set instance variables in your object that gets allocated, and how to retrieve or display the results. So let's have another quick review of what we've learned. We know that we start out a new class with an interface section and the interface section contains the name of the class uh, that we're assigning. It's followed by a colon and that gets followed by the name of the parent class. As I mentioned earlier, most of the examples that we'll be using throughout this book uh, will have the root class or NS object listed right here. After we list the parent class, we have the instant variable declarations, or what's called here the member declarations, and those are included inside, enclosed inside a pair of left and right curly braces. For each instance variable, we specify the instance variable's type and its name. After the right curly brace that closes off the instance variable declarations, we then list the methods uh, that we want to implement for part of this class. And to close off the interface section itself, we use the at and directive. One of the things that's key to object-oriented programming is the understanding that each object that you create has its own unique set of instance variables. And we'll be reinforcing that in the next program example where we show how to work with multiple objects. Let's take a closer look once again for review of what a method header looks like. This is our set numerator method and as we noted the leading minus sign, the leading character on the line which is a minus sign here indicates the type of method. You can put a minus sign there meaning this is an instance method which means a message of this type can be sent to an instance from the class. If a plus sign is used here instead then we're dealing with a class method. An example of a class method is the alloc method and as you saw we sent the alloc message to the class itself not to an instance of the class. The return type is enclosed inside a pair of parentheses. The method name follows next followed by a colon if the method takes an argument and as you'll see later you can have methods that take multiple arguments. The colon is followed by the first uh, argument here, which is an integer enclosed inside a pair of parentheses, followed by the argument name, and that gets followed by a semicolon. So once again, here is set numerator method, takes one argument, which is an integer called n, and doesn't return a value, and um, set numerator is an instance method. The implementation section is um, initiated with the at implementation directive. That gets followed by the class name. In our example, that was fraction. And enclosed within the at implementation directive and the at end directive are the actual definitions for the methods themselves. That is, this is where you put the actual code uh, for implementing each of the methods in your class. 
The program section is where you actually go ahead and start using your class, where you do things like declare variables um, of various objects and also allocate um, or what's known as sometimes instantiate objects from a class. Here we saw how we could declare a variable called myFraction which represents a fraction object. We saw how we could allocate a new fraction object by sending the alloc message to the fraction class, taking the result that comes back and storing it in the myFraction object. We also saw that once we have allocated an object, we need to initialize it. We do that by sending the init method to the object, storing the result back inside the object variable uh, itself. And what we've also uh, seen, um, but not in the case of fractions yet, is that we can take the result that comes back from the allocation, which we know is a fraction object here, and basically just plug this in directly uh, inside our message call. So if we look at this and, and analyze the message calls from the inside out, the first thing we do is we send the alloc message to the fraction class. That will allocate a fraction object for us. We take the fraction object that gets returned and we send it the init message to initialize that object and the result that comes back get stored in my fraction. This is the paradigm you'll see all programmers will use uh, in order to allocate and initialize a new object. So you really should get used to this syntax and using it in your program. What we haven't shown here is that the alloc and the initialization can occur in one step by using the new method. So if we send the new message to our fraction class we will get back an allocated and an initialized fraction object which we can store in my fraction um, just like this. And once again, using the new method is identical uh, to doing the alloc followed by an init. In this case here, which is the last example in this section, and this is also frequently done in programs, we declare my fraction to be a fraction object and we go ahead and allocate and initialize uh, the fraction object at the same time. So his, this is a single line that combines the declaration, the allocation,